Mishnah Bura, uh, we're in Pesach, chapter 435, the law when someone did not examine for chametz on the night of the 14th of Nisan. Paragraph 1. If one did not examine for chametz on the night of the 14th of Nisan, he should examine for it on the day of the 14th of Nisan at whatever hour of the day that he remembers. If one also did not, did not examine for chametz at any time of the day, of the 14th of Nisan, he should examine for chametz during Pesach. If one also did not examine for, pe for chametz during Pesach, he should examine for it after Pesach so that he will not stumble into using chametz for which Pesach passed with it still in his possession. It is forbidden to benefit from such chametz. One should not make a blessing over an examination for chametz after, uh, made after Pesach. Now the Mishnah Bura. Note 1, on the day of the 14th, so if one did not examine, he should examine on the 14th. After the examination, he should nullify the unfound chametz, if the sixth seasonal hour of the day has not yet arrived. After that time has arrived, one is unable to nullify chametz, as stated above in section 434, paragraph 2, but the only available option is just to examine for chametz and dispose of it. Note number two of Mishnah Bura, whatever, whatever hour of the day that he remembers. Once one has remembered his obligation to examine for chametz, he is obliged, obliged to examine for it immediately in case he will again forget that he is required to do so. Mishnah Bura note three. He should examine during Pesach. This applies even if he already nullified all his chametz. He should examine for chametz even on Yom Tov itself. Although one is not allowed to burn chametz on Yom Tov, one is at any rate able to cover it over with a vessel until Matzah Yom Tov, as stated below in section 446, paragraph 1. There are authorities who dispute this and are of the opinion that one should not examine for chametz on Yom Tov, but only on Chalom Oed. The... I'm not sure who that is. Decides that if one did not nullify his chametz before Pesach, he may in fact examine for it even on Yom Tov. But if one already nullified his chametz before Pesach, he should definitely not examine for it on Yom Tov, but only on Chal HaMoed. It may be that someone did not examine for chametz before the time when it became forbidden and he then died. The property therefore served to acquire ownership for them. They will obviously have transgressed the prohibition that chametz should not be seen in one's possession. In such a case, they are bound halach halachically to examine for the chametz and dispose of it. If they did not do so and Pesach passed with the chametz still in their possession, it is prohibited to benefit from it, as is the ruling for all chametz for which Pesach passed, which is still with it still in Jewish possession. On the other hand, if the heirs did not have in mind to come into possession of the chametz, they are not required to dispose of the chametz unless they make use of the particular room which, in which it is lying, in which case they are required to dispose of the chametz in all circumstances because of the fear that they may otherwise come to eat from it. This is because a person cannot bequeath possession with respect to a prohibition to his son. There are authorities who dispute this ruling and are of the opinion that the heirs are obliged in all cases to examine for the chametz and dispose of it. Uh, so, no, no, note four, he should examine after Pesach. All the examinations discussed here must be done with a candle in holes and crevices, even when the examination is done by day. One should not make a blessing. Uh, that is, uh, this is after Pesach, if you find chametz. One should not make a blessing. The circumstances are different in the case of the examination after Pesach. Submitted to return in one's possession, even to eat the chametz then, is only forbidden because of a penalty which was imposed by the sages, because one returned the chametz during Pesach. When it was forbidden to do so, one is only required to examine for the forbidden chametz after Pesach to distinguish between this chametz and permissible chametz. Consequently, you should not make a blessing over the examination. On the other hand, over the examination for chametz during Pesach, one must make the blessing even if you nullify the chametz before Pesach. If absolute chametz formed from one's grain, etc. during Pesach, a blessing is all the more required, then one must definitely make a blessing at the time when he disposes of it. Since this chametz was not included at all with the chametz which was nullified before Pesach, however, if one discovered an article which is not 
absolute chametz. For example, if he discovered wheat in a cooked dish or found anything similar, and when he decided to nullify it in accordance with halacha prior to Pesach, and then found chametz on Pesach, there are conflicting opinions among the Achronim as to whether or not he is required to make a blessing over the disposal of this chametz. For once he already examined for chametz and nullified his chametz in accordance with the halacha and fulfilled the ordainment of the sages, it may be that the original blessing which he made then related to all the chametz which he would find and dispose of. Even if he would only find the chametz during Pesach, he should therefore bear in mind that when there is doubt as to whether or not a blessing should be made, one must be lenient and refrain from doing so.